Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome to another episode of Creative Tuesdays. So in today's video, we are going to do some 3D tracking and then adding your text or any object into your scene. So before I begin, if you guys are new here, then please consider subscribing and make sure to press that bell icon so that you never miss another amazing video like this. So without wasting any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and by the way, I'm recording this tutorial second time because after recording the first time when I was editing, I realized something really strange. Guess what? There was no cursor showing up and I hope now you can see it right here. So you better smash like on this video and leave a comment because I'm doing it for you guys. So let's begin. Alright, so here you can see that I have this stadium footage. And now I'm going to use this one in this example. So I'm going to quickly drag it into this composition. And right away you can see that we have this really large file. So I'm going to select this, press S and let me just quickly scale it down to something like this. Now it's completely up to you. You can use whatever footage you want. You can do some 3D tracking and later on you can add some 3D text or whatever object you want in it. You can also record any video using your camera or mobile and you can follow along with this tutorial. Now this technique might not work in couple of clips which have motion blur or which have a really large depth of field because there won't be enough points to track and you won't be able to get a perfect solve. Now you can see that it is 30 second long and I don't want to track the full footage. It's completely up to you. You can go and do it. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use only the six second part. So I'm going to select the layer, press Alt and right square bracket and I'm going to quickly trim this. So I'm going to use this part only. Now if I apply the 3D tracking onto this, uh, it will not work. And reason for that is you will notice that we already scaled this to 50%. The way around to that is you can simply select the layer, then right click, pre-compose. And let me just quickly move all attributes to the new composition and let's call this video. Just click on OK. So now if I select the layer, press S, you can see that scale is back to 100. So now we can easily track this. So in order to do the tracking, just go into the effects and preset panel and type 3D camera tracker. Simply select it and drag it onto your footage. And it will start analyzing your footage and it will take some time depending upon your system. And now I'm going to pause this video and once it is finished, I'll come back. Alright, so now the tracking is finished and you will notice that now there are these small points. So these are called the tracking points and if you move around the timeline, you can see that all these points will be stick to a particular location and they will track and follow throughout the video just like this. So these are very helpful when you want to add some objects and you want to place them into a perspective regarding this clip. And some of you might not be able to see these points and reason for that is your effect might not be selected. So right now you can see that there are no tracking points even though we have selected the layer. So in order to make them visible, just make sure your effect is selected. Now you will notice one more thing that we have this really large red circle uh, which is moving here and there as you move around these points. Now what it represents it, it will show you the perspective or the orientation of any object that you will place with respect to these points. So you can see that if I move over here, you can see that it will, if I create an object, it will be placed something like this, uh, which is looking flat onto the ground. So you can click and you can see that it has selected three points. And if you want, you can increase or decrease its size from the target size. But for this example, let's stick with 100. And now you can pick wherever you want to place your object. So we want our text to be on the ground. So you can see that we have these three points. So I'm going to use them. So you can simply right click. And from here, you can click on create solid and camera. So now you can see that we have this solid. And if I play back, you will notice that this solid is moving and it is completely tracked and fit according to the scene. So you can probably select it and let me just quickly scale it down so you can see it nicely. So this is how you can check if your selected points are completely tracked. Now instead of solid, we want to create a text so you can do that as well. So let me just quickly hide this solid and I'm going to again select the camera tracker 
and now I'm going to simply right click and over here you can see that we have this option called create text so let me just quickly click on that and you can see that we have our text layer and right now it's very large so let's press S and let me just quickly scale it down something like this and let's play around with its orientation so you can just simply click over here and let me just quickly change its orientation so that it looks like it's on the ground something like this let me just quickly scale this up so now if I play back you can see that our text is perfectly aligned to the ground now let me just quickly select this text and as I mentioned that I want my text to be somewhere around here now there are two ways in which you can do that you can either simply select the text and just move it just like this and now you can see that our text is aligned and there is one another way which is I'm going to use in this example is by simply moving the anchor point so you can just simply move the text using the anchor point you will notice that our anchor point is staying the same but our text is moving which is exactly what I want with this example I'm going to quickly place it somewhere around here but before that let me just quickly align it so that it looks like our text is standing on the ground so I'm going to change the X rotation to 90 and let me just quickly rename this to score and also I want to scale this up so let me just quickly scale this something like this and now I can simply place it wherever I want so I want this to be somewhere around here and let me just quickly scale this down just like this so it's completely up to you you can just place it wherever you want so let me just quickly play it and now you can see that our text is placed and it is completely following our tracking markers so we are pretty much done with our positioning and now in order to blend it more with the scene what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some shadow now there are two ways in which you can do that you can either create a light source and then try to match wherever the light is coming into this scene and just play around with the intensity till it matches the scene but there is another way in which you can add some quick shadow to this uh, which is what I'm going to use because we don't want it to be that perfect so I'm going to select the text layer then you can press ctrl D to duplicate it now you can press R for the rotation and we don't want the X rotation so I'm going to set it to 0 so now you can see that our text has moved here and we can probably press A for the anchor point and I'm going to set all the values to 0 something like this and now I'm going to quickly align it with our main text and let me just quickly apply fill effect so that I can see the shadow and let's change its color to something like black and you can probably zoom in and now you can play around with these values and yeah I think this is looking fine now it looks like we have a shadow so if I play back yeah I think this is looking much better again you can go ahead and just play around with these values so now we have our shadow but it is not looking realistic so we can play around with it so let me just quickly apply an effect called Gaussian Blur so just simply select it and apply it onto the shadow layer and we can probably place it below and let me just quickly rename this to shadow and you can play around with the blurriness and you can increase it something like this and now you can see that we have this really nice shadow in the background probably we are going to lower down its intensity by reducing the opacity something like this so if I play back here you can see that now this is looking fine now you have to make sure that your shadow is in the right direction because if the light is coming from this side you want your shadow in front of the text right here but since we we are kind of faking it so we think that our light source is somewhere around here so we are going to place it just like this and it's completely up to you you can play around with the blurriness so yeah I think this is looking fine now the best thing about this method is that since these are text layers so you can easily apply any of the text properties and text or text animation preset and it will work just like that so let's apply a bounce expression so if you come under the expression you can see we have this text bounce so all you have to do is just simply select it and drag it onto the text layer 
and don't forget to do the same thing on the shadow as well because we want both the layers to be moving and now right away you can see that we have the text animation and you can probably play around with these values to make it look much better so let's change the bounce frequency to 2 and just make sure to do the changes on both the layers and I'm going to change the bounce decay to something like 10 and let's do the same thing over here as well so now if I play back here you can see that we have this really amazing text animation just like this and let me just quickly go back to 4 now it's completely up to you you can play around with these values and you can select whatever you want so I think this is looking much better so this is how you can create some really nice text and track it according to your scene now you can obviously edit it by simply double clicking on it and just type whatever you want and you will notice that your text has already aligned itself according to the scene now there is one more thing what if you want this text to be an actual 3d text and you want this to have some 3d extrusion so there are two ways in which you can do that so the first method is you can check out this tutorial of mine in which i have showed how you can extrude any object in 3d and it will have a 3d depth to this so you can follow this tutorial and you can add some 3d depth to this text and the second method is you can do that using the cinema 4d render which is inbuilt in after effects so i'm going to show you the second method but both the methods have their own pros and cons so you can pick whatever method you want so in order to change this to 3d first we are going to change our render so you can go under the composition click on composition setting and let's go under the 3d render and from here you can change the render from classic 3d to cinema 4d and you will notice that it will disable few of these properties like blending modes track mats motion blur so these are some of the disadvantages while using this technique because if you have use blending modes in your scene then those will be disabled so it's totally up to you you can use whatever method you want now let me just quickly click on ok so we have our shadow and our text so i'm going to quickly disable our shadow and we are going to focus on this text only so if you go under the text you can see that we have this option called geometry option let me just quickly go under it and here we have the extrusion depth so if i increase it you will notice that our text now has a 3d depth to it but you will also notice that it is completely white and reason for that is we don't have any lights in our scene so first let me just quickly add a light so let's go to layer new light and let's select the point light just click on ok so now you can see that we have light in our scene and you can play around with its position and you can see that it is affecting our text so it's completely up to you you can align it wherever you want now you will notice one more thing that our text is now really dark so in order to fix that we are going to add another light so let me just quickly go to layer new light and for this one we are going to select the ambient light just click on ok so now you can see that we have some ambient light and it's much better again you can go under the lights and you can play around with their intensities and it will give different results depending upon that if you want you can change the color of light as well and it will add some colors to your scene but for this one let's stick with white you can also enable the fall off and you can change their radius and you can play around with this but for this one let's go with simple light you can probably increase its intensity something like this and again you have to play around with this with their position just like this so now we have our 3d text and you can also do one more thing you can go under the 3d text and from here you can enable the pebble profile you can enable the pebble style to something like angular and let's just decrease the bevel depth just like this so now you can see that we have this really nice bevel edges and let me just quickly lower down the intensity something like this now there are more options you can go under the text material option and you can play around with different properties like metallic ambient diffuse whatever you want so it's completely up to you 
and right away you can see that we have the 3d text but we are not able to see our shadow you will notice that if i select the layer and go under it you can see that cast shadow option is on but still we are not able to see any shadow and reason for that is there is no ground plane or any surface on which this object can cast its shadow so we'll have to create a ground plane for that now remember the solid that we created in the beginning so we are going to use it because it is already aligned with this scene so i'm going to quickly enable it and i can just simply scale this up and now we have our text and also we have our shadow but you will notice that we have this really big green plane as well so we have to get rid of it now this is one of the biggest downside of this method is that you cannot get rid of this plane easily because you can see that there are no blending modes so we cannot play around with those and just remove this but there are ways around in which you can fix this so let me just quickly first move this below something like this so that our text is not cut off now to get rid of this green background what you can do is if you go under the green background properties and under the material option you can see that it has this option called accept lights so you can just disable it you can disable the cast shadow option as well and now you can see that we have this really bright green area and we have this really harsh shadow so you can soften the shadow intensity by simply going under the light and you can press AA and you can lower down the darkness of the shadow using this parameter just like this and you can diffuse the shadow just like that so now we have this really bright green background and we have our text so there is no direct way to get rid of this so if you think that you can apply a key light or color key effect on this to get rid of it it won't work let me just quickly show you so you can select the color key option and just simply drag it over here so if you select the green you can see that now our shadow is gone as well and reason for that is our shadow was on top of the green solid and once you applied the key effect it has keyed out the whole background and now there is no plane on which our object can cast shadow so that's why we don't have any shadow in the scene so according to me the only way to get rid of this green solid is by simply rendering this out as it is and later on you can re import it in after effects and apply it on top of your video footage and after that you can key out the screen area so if you know a better way of removing this then you can mention in the comments below but for now i think this is the only way how you can do that you can probably increase its size just like this so now you can render this out and you will notice that all the animations and everything will be applied to this and later on you can composite it on top of your layer so this is how you can add some really nice 3d text to your scene and you can track it using the 3d camera tracker and you can see that now our text is aligned to our scene so i hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you have any queries or questions you can ask in the comments below also if you want to learn more things like this then make sure to subscribe and don't forget to press that bell icon and if you want to support me then you can join my patreon page on which you will get access to the tutorial project files and some exclusive templates that are available only for patreons so link for that will be in the description below so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one